Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge series. So Side Effects is holding a 31 day challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic. I've decided to take on the challenge and record each day's work so that you can see the process. I'm doing this so that I can challenge myself and I'd recommend that you do the same. So let's get straight into it. Yo, so day eight. Oi. Day eight is falling. The idea for falling, right from day one, I saw falling. I was like, oh, I really want to do the the portal effect from the game, uh, Portal Two or Portal One, whichever one. I was like, that would be so cool, right? A portal on the floor, a portal in the ceiling, cube falling from ceiling to floor. I was waiting the whole time. I was patiently waiting for falling to come along so I could give it a go. And this is what happened. So I'm showing you this once again after everything. This one doesn't have a time lapse at all. Um, I apologize about that. But what happened was I was still rendering the speed one. Remember I said the speed one was taking a ridiculous time to render and it was super noisy and I'm dehydrated from crying myself to sleep. But while that was rendering, I was using another computer to work on this. Unfortunately, that one doesn't have anything set up for recording, so I don't have a recording of the process, but that does mean I can take you through the setup. All right, this got very complicated. So I'm sure many of you are aware of solvers, right? And dynamics networks. You have things like a pyro solver, or a pop solver, or a flip solver. Right? You have all of these different solvers. But what you might not know is that they are custom solvers. Custom solvers are solvers that you can make yourself. I always thought that it was extremely advanced and complicated. And I was right. It is. It is kind of complicated. So anyways, I'm going to show you what's going on in here. It all starts with a little bit of a portal setup. I know this looks like a mess. It is a mess. But basically, I have two points, right? these two little points over here. And I also have an interior. So it's just some walls and these two pillars at the top, just an environment. What I do is I take that environment into the setup node. I make these two little points over here and I can move them wherever I want. And then I array them onto a surface and copy grids to those faces and then copy spheres to those faces and then make them fit inside the grid. So I just create two portals, right? That's how I create them. And what's cool is I can ray this onto whatever surface I want. Say if I go to other object, I can ray a portal onto the wall. It's all about proximity. So if it's close to the wall, it'll ray onto the wall. Um, anyways, I put two on the floor because it's falling. So I wanted it to fall. You take that and this over here is the SOP version. So SOPs is just non-dynamics. It's, it's this level, it's not dynamic. So this is the SOP version of what I created in DOPS. So I take these two portals out and put them into a rigid body simulation, right? I also cut it out of the floor. So if you go to, so I think it's called portal room, I have it here somewhere, room geo, right? Um, I cut the portals out of the floor and then I can use this as a collider. So I go into my rigid body simulation, I bring in the cube, and this floor geo with the two holes. And I'm going to play it back for you so you can see what it does. So what I have here is all of this on the one side is rigid body stuff. So this is a solver, an RBD packed object, which is my cube, the static object, which is this ground plane, um, a pop spin and speed limit. So all of that is Pretty basic, right? It's just things to create a dot network. However, I've got my own parasitic solver sitting on the side. What this does is it feeds off of the main setup and it does its own calculations and injects its own information into the solver. So basically what it does is when this cube goes through the portal, all right, so it's not through yet. You can see it's not through yet, but when it goes through, it doesn't go out the bottom. I reset and push it out where it should on this corresponding portal. So it goes from there to the corresponding spot on the other portal. And then I reverse the velocity because if you maintain this downward velocity, it would teleport to this portal, but then fall down. So it has to reverse its velocity. So it goes up. 
and then it comes down and it intersects with the portal, goes beneath it, teleports, velocity gets flipped again, flies up. Now, I'm going to show you the setup. This was probably the most complicated setup I've, I've done. So, it's not perfect yet, but it's, it's pretty good, it works. Right, so, cube goes in. We take this cube, we fetch our portals. We check for intersection. Is it intersecting? We check, yes, it's intersecting. What do we want to do then? We want to create some attributes. So I actually wanted to draw this out for you because the logic isn't very easy to explain. But this is cool if you want to create your own one. Like this is, this is a good starting point because I struggled to find information on this. Uh, let me just plug in my tablet. Yeah, so this, it was difficult to find information on this. Um, so this is mostly what I figured works. So if you do have a better idea, please let me know. Um, because I am interested in actually fixing up the setup and making it a lot better. But the idea is, you have a portal. Actually, I should probably use different colors for this. Okay, so you have a portal over there. And let's say a portal on the wall over there. Thing goes into portal. Thing comes out of portal. What I have though is I have a cube and it's falling. So it falls and then it goes sort of through the portal. But what we check for is this intersection over here. Is it intersecting the portal? If it is intersecting the portal, then I have an attribute called I and I say, yes, it is intersecting. I just means intersecting. So yes, it's intersecting. But also set T, which stands for teleport, so um, to teleport, set that to one, right? So now it is intersecting and it should teleport. Then also record which portal this is. So I have something called portal and that's one or two. So this, so maybe this one over here is portal one, this one over here is portal two. So that would mean that this recognizes it and says this is portal one. Cool. Then this cube keeps falling. As soon as it's no longer intersecting, right? So it's through, it's not through the portal. What I do is I say intersecting is no longer equal to one. So it's no longer one, it's now zero. So now I say I equals zero, but T still equals one. I don't change T. So then what I say is if I is equal zero, but T is still equal to one, then clearly it's passed through a portal, but hasn't yet teleported. So then I say, what portal is this? And then I say, move it to the position of the other portal. So then it will say, okay, move from portal one to portal two. And there's some, and there's a bit of calculations that are done for where on the portal it needs to show up because obviously if it falls in on the side over here, then it should come out at the side over here, right? Those two correspond. So there's some calculations for that. But then when it reaches this portal, so this cube immediately gets transported. Whoops, I have made a mess. Okay, new cube incoming, don't worry. Coming, coming, coming. Cube, new cube, okay. Cube shows up over here now, right? He was here, chup, chup, chup. This is where our cube was. It teleported to here. That means that once it has teleported, teleport should equal zero. So now T equals zero. So, so I still equals zero because it's not intersecting. I equals zero, T equals zero. But then you have to deactivate this portal or else when it crosses over to the other side of this portal, it'll just switch back to the thread. Because remember, if it starts intersecting, right? So if it intersects on this portal, then I is going to equal one, T is going to equal one. And then as soon as it shoots out where it's supposed to, remember it went in here, so it should shoot out here. When it shoots out here, it's going to get teleported again. That's not right. So we need to deactivate this current portal. So we keep track of this portal. We say it's coming from portal one, which means we should deactivate portal two until it's through. Once it's through, we can reactivate portal two. Okay. So it comes through over here and then it's fair game again. If it goes back through this portal, it can come out here. So now that we have that figured out, I can show you in the actual setup how that works. So there, we check intersection, right? It's intersecting with the portal. So we set 
i equals 1, t equals 1. If it's no longer intersecting, i equals 0, but t will still equal 1. So this is actually extra, this is silly, I, I shouldn't have actually had this, but anyway. I tell it that it needs to move, I set the portal number that it's coming from, and then it gets moved to where it needs to go. So, right, you can actually check the attributes on here. So i1, one. t1, one. portal1. One. So that's exactly what I showed you, right? It's intersecting, it needs to be teleported, it's in portal1. It was no longer intersecting at the next frame, so it switches. It sets t to 0, i to 0, and then it's no longer touching any portal, so portal becomes 0. Now it's fair game again, so it can go up and then come down and do the same thing. How it knows where to put itself is based on this side over here. So you have your one portal, you have your other portal. You extract the transform, so you use an extract transform of each portal. But basically what that's doing is it's saying, how do I need to transform this portal to make its transform equal to this portal? So to show you that, it would basically be something like this. It would be, if your portal is like this, and you want it like this, how do you do it? How do you get it to be in this position? And so obviously it would need to sort of rotate like that. So that would be like a 90 degree rotation on this axis, right? It rotates around this axis so that it's now lying down and maybe it transforms forward a bit and down a bit. So all of that's recorded. It records that. It records down, forward, down, like a cheat code. It records it into a matrix. So now you can actually use this matrix to transform something else. So if you had a cube and you wanted it to go from this position to whatever the equivalent on the floor would be, then you use this and you apply it to the cube. So the cube gets rotated down, moves to the side, moves down, and so your cube goes from something like this to something like this. I probably should have used different colors. This all just looks like mad squiggles. But that idea worked. So you take the transform, so you figure out what needs to, how it needs to be transformed for each one to be in the other one's orientation. Then you transform the cube in both situations, right? So as you can see, here's the, here's the cube originally. This is where it would be if it had to teleport. And then you just say, depending on which portal, and if it needs to be moved, which is basically that T thing. A T and move are basically the same here. Um, I overcomplicated this. Then remove it, move its current position to position two, which is one of these inputs. So that means that it transforms itself to that position over there. So it goes through, and then this becomes true, so it moves itself. The velocity thing, this V at V equals dihedral, is also kind of interesting. Dihedral rotates one velocity vector onto another. So let me show you again with some more mad scientist drawings. You have a vector, right? So a vector is just a direction. Um, so whatever direction it may be. So this is zero, one, zero, right? One on the y-axis that's so pointing up. If you wanted to rotate this to be pointing this way, then dihedral does the maths for you. You can ask it, what do I need to do for this over here to equal this over here? And it will do the maths. I don't actually know the maths. I'm not that smart. I just know how to type things. It does that. And then it gives you some value. So some value, value. This value isn't this vector rotate. This value is just what you need to do to rotate it. So what you do is you multiply this by your vector and it gives you your rotated vector, right? So it equals the rotated vector. So that means that if you have velocity, you can have the portal direction. So imagine that this is actually the portal direction and this is velocity. So we have one like this. So we know that the cube's flying upwards into this portal. You do dihedral to figure out how it needs to be rotated when it leaves. And then you do this over here. It figures out the new velocity. So it goes from velocity up to velocity sideways and your cube comes flying out this way, right? So all of that velocity that it had is now going this way. And so that's what dihedral is for. So you teleport and you do some changes to velocity. You then also set that attribute of t to zero because now it has teleported. So you can set that value to zero. What all of that does is it gives you a little portal effect. And I wanna show you a bit of a bug that I have with it. It's, it's a bit weird. I'd like to fix it at some point though. So I have this over here. So say I put my portal onto the wall, right? So my portal is now on the wall 
Let me take a look at it. Yeah, so it's my portal is now on the wall. Okay, so as you can see, I've moved it onto the wall now. I can go into my rigid body simulation, and this is where my bug happens. Um, I'll show you. It's going to be a bit weird, but just bear with me. Okay, it worked. I have no idea why it worked. It shouldn't have worked. It's not supposed to. That looks very weird. I think it's probably my pop speed limit and spin thing over here. Um, I'll probably fix it. Okay, so for some reason it's working. Guys, I, I don't know. It's not supposed to work. <laughs> but basically, for some reason, I have to transform my one portal. So you can see it's facing this way. Or well, it's facing this way, but I have to transform it so it's facing the other way. And I don't know why. If I don't do this, then what happens is when my cube teleports from here to here, it teleports to the back instead of to the front of the portal. And what I'm assuming, not certain, what I imagine is that if you have a line, one like this and one like this, there's two ways that you could transform this line to be like this. You could either rotate it 90, right? So that was, this would be a 90 degree rotation. Or you could do a 270 degree rotation. 270. Now for this line, it's fine. You end up with the same thing. But for a cube that has its own rotation like this, if you rotate it this way, as opposed to rotating it this way, it ends up in a different place. That's what I imagine is wrong with my setup, and I'm still trying to figure out a way of correcting it, but um, when I'm doing these one-day challenges, I don't really have time to stop and, and think about these things. But I would like to, because it's a really cool setup, and I'd be happy to share it with you guys, so that you can also play around with it. It's actually just a lot of fun to play around with. It's like a game. You just put it on whatever wall you want, and uh, then you can see what happens. Um, let me just switch off these little lights. They're a bit weird. Um, so yeah, you can see, it's like a little game. And it works with any rigid body dynamics. So you could like throw a duck. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why duck. You could, it's not even a rigid body. Ducks are like soft body. Um, you could throw a... I cannot think of a single solid object. You could, you can throw a, you could throw a pen. A pen. You can throw, a, that's all I have on my desk that I can use as reference. You can throw a pen into the portal and it'll still follow the same logic. And that's actually what happens when you drop when you drop pens. You just drop them and they fall into a portal and you never see them again. I don't know how many pens I've lost. What I'm getting at is that this works. Um, it works for whatever setup you have and it's loads of fun to play around with. So, you know, play around with it if you want, I'll attach it. And so after that, all I do is take that and put it into this little companion cube geo setup where I make two cubes, right? So it actually, you need to duplicate it, right? Yeah, so now you can see these companion cubes, one, a cube can peak, right? So it can be halfway through this one and halfway out of the other. So I just basically did the same thing where I transform it so that there's a copy of it. Um, and you never notice that there's actually two, right? Because you'll only ever see one at, at a single time. Oh, and there you can already see what the issue is. This is what I meant. It's teleporting to the front. It should be teleporting behind, right? It should, this is what you should see. That corner over there is what you should be peeking, is what should be peeking out of this portal. If anyone can figure that out, you know, hit me up, let me know why it's doing that. I do assume it is a transform thing. Anyways, I wasn't happy with the render of this, but I'm really happy with the actual setup. So, you know, not a major loss. I'm not really in this Hulai contest to win. It's more of a challenge to myself. And so I'm actually happiest with the setup, but not too happy with the render. And that's okay. You know, it's um, the setup is a win in and of its own. So yeah. Anyways, hope that wasn't too boring. It was just a lot of talking. So thank you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's one is... I don't even know what tomorrow's one is. I'll see you then.